There is a new orchestra library that has been causing quite a conversation online ever since it was released a couple weeks ago. That orchestral library is Audio Imperia Jaeger, and today I'm going to show you a couple tracks I've wrote with it, like very short tracks to test this new library. And I'm going to tell you what I think about it, both in the positive and in the negative. So, Audio Imperia Jaeger. Uh, the first demo that I've wrote sounds something like this. And in this case, Jaeger is on the strings, brass, and trailer hits. The rest is from other libraries. And this is what it sounds like on the aggressive cue I wrote. Uh, it's a Final Fantasy IX cover of the track called Hunter's Chance, and it sounds something like this. Now, that was Jaeger on the aggressive, sort of ignorant side of writing orchestral music, which is the one I love the most. But as for dynamic things with lots of legatos and stuff like that, I wrote a more dynamic demo track, 30 seconds long still. It's from Final Fantasy X, uh, the Hymn of the Faith. And I wrote this using some strings, a bit of brass, some percussion and vocals, which are all 100% Jaeger. And it sounds something like this. So in this case, you heard like the legatos and dynamism of this library, which in my opinion is better than the sort of epic over the, the, over the top sort of sound it has. Now, let's look into this library. I'm going to talk for a while now because Jaeger is a very comprehensive library, probably the, like the most complete bundle for modern orchestral scoring because it comes with some strings patches, which are split, you know, it's not like high string ensemble, low string ensemble. And this is a good point uh, at, at its favor uh, because you don't usually have strings split like that in only one orchestral bundles, but you do have those in Jaeger that are split like that. So you also have brass, which is split in the same way, and percussion, and uh, you also have vocals from Merete Solvet. Uh, I hope that's the way to say her name. She's the singer who sang on Two Steps from Hell songs and stuff like that. Really impressive. We're going to see all these patches later, but just to give you an outline, we also have a sound design section where you have trailer hits, uh, a bit of drones, a bit of brands and stuff like that. You heard some of those in my uh, previous uh, track from before. Now, I need to tell you what I think about this library. So in a moment, we're going to go over Jaeger. I'm going to show you all the instrument groups and tell you what I think about them. But first, I want to give you a too long didn't read review so you can, you know, hear my thoughts straight away. So Jaeger. I think it's one of the greatest library Audio Imperia ever released. I'm so proud of seeing, after trying this product, I was so proud of what they achieved with this. Because this is like a quintessential starting kit for, you know, composers in general. It has everything and it sounds modern as hell. So the strings, brass and percussion sound good. The vocals and sound design are top notch, in my opinion. Now, um, this library has a very, like the peculiarity about this library is that it's very balanced, versatile. So no matter what type of music you, you make, it's going to open many doors. This is great for composers who want to write trailer music. Like that's like the quintessential kit for composers who want to write, write trailer music first. But also, you know, if you're an EDM producer and want a bit of orchestra on your tracks, this is great because you also, you also get the cinematic effects as trailer hits and stuff like that. And you have, you get the vocals, which are impressive but also if you're a you know a skilled composer you make a variety of genres of music and maybe you have a few libraries already this is still a nice addition 
Now, in that case, though, if you have lots of libraries and you're happy with the libraries you have, I think Jaeger is going to stand out the most for sound design and vocals. As for strings and brass and percussion, uh, if you already have many libraries, you might have libraries in your arsenal which uh, sound better to you compared to Jaeger. Again, it is balanced. I think that the strings and brass and percussion, uh, at least in my, in my opinion, now if everyone has its own opinion, I think they are balanced, but they didn't really stand out to me compared to other libraries. Although the strings have very nice legatos and with the brass uh, and strings too, you can do some pretty wild things when it comes to this FX, uh, you know, panel, which I'm going to talk about that later. And as you know, like my personal style is like super loud, like ignorantly loud. So when, it, you know, when it came to staccato, spiccato and stuff like that, I was kind of, uh, you know, taken aback by how, you know, it's not that they're not loud, but I have louder libraries in my arsenal. So I don't think I'm going to use Jaeger for loudness, but I am going to use it for dynamic passages because as you heard in the Final Fantasy X demo I showed you before, it's very nice in dynamics. So uh, is it a worthwhile buy? I think it is so, especially if you're a beginner who is still buying his first libraries that like a 100% worthwhile buy. If you're a producer of electronic music, you want some, you know, orchestral backend in your tracks, this is a worthwhile buy. If you're a, you know, composer with lots of libraries already and you're thinking of buying this one, uh, it's worthwhile if you are super impressed by the vocals and sound design, in my opinion. As for the strings and brass and percussion, there might be other cool things out there that you might have already in your arsenal, but that's for you to choose. Now, let's move on to each uh, instrument group and they're going to tell you what I think about it. One thing I recommend you to do though is to go on Audio Imperia's website and check out all the demos they made for Jaeger because I'm just one composer and my opinion is just relative to my style. So what I'm going to say might not be, uh, like other people might not agree. Like I heard my uh, good friend uh, Jean-Gabriel Renaud, I think that's the way you say his name. He's like one of the most insane composers. And his music is super orchestrated, way more, like 20, 20 times as orchestrated as mine. He's like insane. And when he tried this library, he was blown away. Like literally, he says like this is like one of the best orchestral libraries he ever tried. Now, I don't orchestrate in the same way. So for my way of orchestrating, I don't have that same, uh, you know, that same thought. It's still one of the best libraries I ever tried, though. Like probably the second best one I ever tried. Uh, the first one being Metropolis Arc 1, because that's... You know, that's the ideal of loudness I'm always looking for. And uh, my another friend of mine, Daniel Babon, wrote a track with this, like with Jaeger, and it sounds way more impressive than anything I could write. So, you know, the tool is also relative to the composer's style, you know? So I definitely recommend you to check out the Daniel Babon demo track. Check out the John Gabriel Reno demo track. And also check out Daniel James' demo track for Jaeger. Uh, and see, like, get an idea of how this library sounds when used by different breeds of a composer. And then you take your guess. Now, let's get into Jaeger. Let's talk about each string instrument, not string, each <laughs> instrument group. Starting from the strings. As for the strings, so um, the interface is pretty much the same for pretty much every patch, by the way. And it's lo it looks like alien and complicated, but it's actually pretty simple once you understand it. Now, let's move on to the violins patch, and I'm going to show you the, the, you know, this, you know, graphical user interface. So, this, this is the interface. Here you have the mic positions, and you can set them up as you want to. This is a feature that well, every library has now, and, you know, mic positions. Then you have this, which are the controllers, dynamics, expression, sample start, legato sample start, but also dynamic range. Dynamic range is a slider that determines the behavior of the dynamics uh, on the module, pretty much. If you set this to 100%, it means that your uh, sound will go, you know, when you put this to 0%, it's going to be super quiet. But if I put the dynamic range to low levels, then the difference between 0% and 100% of the dynamics is going to be reduced, which means that you're going to have less dynamics, pretty much. So this slider is pretty cool. You also have velocity curve, and you can... You can... Um, edit the range of the notes. So for example, I could, you know, go down a little bit more than the violins would normally allow me to uh, and stuff like that. Now you also have this big knob. Which um, <clears throat> triggers some effects when you activate it. 
Now, if you want to edit the behavior with the big knob, you click here and you can choose which effects you activate. Right now, lo-fi is activated and there's others too, but we're going to talk about effects later. There's also an effects tab here, um, sort of a pergiator, sort of step sequence, sequencer, and yeah, effects. Now, as for the strings, you have multiple articulations, of course. Among those, there are legatos. Well, I cannot play. Jesus. You also have sustain. Which sounds pretty good. You have tremolos too. Sorry. And you have spiccatos. Now, as for the long articulations, they sound amazing. But as for the short ones, that's like I really like when the short articulations on a library are like super loud because that's the type of stuff I like to do, as you as you know me uh, very well. And the spiccatos, they actually do not sound super loud. So, for example, if you check out the, the you know, the demo, the first one, these are the spiccatos. Now, the velocities are also a bit toned down here, but if you put this to the max, it's still not as loud as other libraries I have. So I'm, I'm not going to, I think, I'm not going to use this library for loud spiccatos because even put them, putting it up to the max, like that's actually increased their, their velocities a bit. I don't really like the sound of them. Like they're not as loud as I would like them to be. And it's not as if they should be loud, like natural, like natural sounding strings do sound like this. Uh, you know, the loud libraries like Metropolis, Arc 1 and stuff like that, they almost don't make sense due to how loud they are. So this is just my personal taste. I love things that are super, like, incredibly loud. And the short articulations in this one aren't. So, yeah, that's, that's a downside for me, but it's not a bad thing. It's just that it's balanced. But I like unbalanced things pretty much. So, yeah, you also have Portatos. Legno and Bartok Pizzicatos. So, as for the strings, I, in my opinion, they really stand out when it comes to long articulations, legatos and sustains. As for legatos and stuff like that, you have legatos on violins and cellos and French horns, I think, and uh, a few other sounds probably, but not all instruments have legatos. Now, this is just a temporary thing, I think. I read that. Jaeger, uh, while it's a complete product, it's being updated. So in the future, there's going to be legato uh, articulation for every instrument, I think. So it's a good thing that they're, you know, still working on this library, even though it is released. It means that they really want to give importance to this product because, of course, it's a hell of a great product. Now, let's quickly listen to what each string instrument sounds like. So these are the first violins. Sorry. Oh, that was a bit out of time. But yeah, those are, you know, the spiccatos and violins, and this is the legatos. Um, you only have violins, not first violins or second violins. Then there's the violas that are something like this. I like that they sound, you know, pretty interesting on the low register. I'm pretty good on high register too. I, probably the violas are, are my favorite uh, string instrument in this library. And then there's the cellos. The cellos have legatos and, uh, yeah, sustain and everything. Uh, 
As for the regato, it sounds something like this. Wait, what, what is it? Oh, it's, it was on the other uh, example, sorry, but... Well, the cello legato, let's just play it. Uh, I'm gonna try to play it. No, that... That was supposed to be like the Chevalier de Sangriol Sang or something. But yeah, that was the sound of the, the Cello Legato. And uh, as for the basses, they sound something like this. Uh, you get a better example, you know, a better you know, example of it on my other demo that I showed you before, but yeah, that's for the strings. So very balanced sound, not too loud, v gets very quiet very easily, and, uh, you know, it's very dynamic. That's what I wanted to say. As for the brass, let's move on to the brass. Now I want to talk about this knob, finally. The potential about this library, other than the sound design and the vocals, in my opinion, is the way you can really mangle up the sound and mess up with the sound. So thanks to this effects panel. And uh, so what I did here on the tubas, I went and I enabled the distortion and the convolution reverb, um, you know, effects. I also linked this, like the drive of the distortion and, uh, you know, the amount of the reverb to this MIDI control command called BRAM. Now the tuba sounds something like this. Sorry. You know, but if I do enable the Bram and increase it, I get a Bram sound. And that's possible because of the internal commands you have, like internal knobs and effects you have in this library. Then if I go out and I add, you know, I don't know, a sound goodizer or something, as I showed you in the other video, it sounds like bananas. And that's a natural sound of Jaeger. To tell you how powerful this library is, I wonder how many things I could do with this. Like maybe I could run the strings through, uh, you know, a step sequencer and add a bit of reverb to them, like a lots of reverb to them, lo-fi, and get a sort of strange pad sound of drone. I don't know. You have so many possibilities thanks to this thing. You also, yeah, you also have this knob, um, which I haven't tried yet, but yeah, you can assign you know things to the knob by going here. You can assign the effects you want to. And as you increase the knob, those effects are going to, like, you know, increase in terms of value. It's the same thing I did here with the brand command, really. But it's internal. So, yeah, I'm not sure why I used this, but I could have used the knob. But, yeah, as for the brass, I think the brass sounds pretty good. It has, though, the same, like, the, the same thing about, I mentioned about the strings are present in the brass, too. So, actually, you know, I think the brass in the short articulation sounds better than the strings. Yeah, kind of like the short articulations of the brass. Now, as for the brass, just like with the strings, you get split patches. So you have tubas, you have bass drums, you have French horns and trumpets. Let's see how each sounds. You also have the, you know, the different articulations as I showed you before. And uh, the French horn has more articulation than his brothers. So let's, uh, let's start from the French horn, yes. Let's go and listen to what it sounds like isolated. Not, not bad at all. I kind of like this French horn. Um, it's not the loudest again, but I do like it a lot. And uh, it's also pretty good in the low articulations. Uh, low octaves, sorry. But the cool thing is that you can do the brand thing with the French horn too, you know? So that, that brand thing here is like a selling point for me because I like to mess up with things a lot. Now... Uh, as for the articulation, I was saying the brass, uh, the French horn is the one with the most articulation. So you have legatos, sustain, staccatissimo. Sorry, staccatissimo. And staccato, which is like a longer version. 
Portato and the rip. The rip was the only disappointing thing about the brass for me because I don't see myself using this. It's it's way too uh you know, too long. So I tried it and it didn't sound good. I like the you know instant rip. This one isn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't really like it. But that's just my style, and that's just one articulation out of you know like sort of like six or more that sound amazing. You know. So um, that's for the French horn. Moving on to the trumpets now. The trumpets sound quite good too. I use them in this track to accompany the French horn. So along with the French horn, they sound like this. Um, in terms of sound, it's the same thing as the other sounds, really. And um, yeah, they have legatos too. As for the bass trombones, they sound something like this. I really love how they sound in this part. So when you go low, they really stand out in my opinion. So that's for the bass drum and uh, tubas. As I showed you before, they go very low. And in here, I also did a pitch automation, so it does instead of it has that sort of a sort of rising quality to it. I cannot explain it, it's so weird, but. And uh, I also, you know, increased the bram level of it a little bit. So along with the bass trombones, I think they really sound great. Because, you know, the, the, the tubas are super low and the bass trombones are a bit higher. And you really notice this when I enable isotoposon a bit. I mean, the brass sounds amazing, pretty much. So yeah, really like the brass. So now I want to talk about the trailer effects instead. Now the trailer effects come in patches, um, contact patches. So you go here, um, you go on Jaeger, and you have pretty much a patch for brams, one for drones, one for hits, mechanical brams and mechanical hits and mechanical sound effects. What I did is I just went and I extracted all of this into a folder so, because I prefer to work with audio samples. Now I use them in this track along with some percussion and some effects from other libraries, and they sound like this. So the samples from the audio um, Jaeger sound effects are this. Or this. So these sort of hits and I know brams. These are interesting. You also had drones. You know, atmospheric sound, pretty much. Which I didn't use in this demo, but... Some are more interesting than others. And you have the Brahms, too. They also come in different versions, like with no, without impacts or bram only. 
That was super loud, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, you heard uh, how wild they sound. Um, so that's the sound design compartment, which is like mind blowing for me. The only bummer really is that they didn't include risers. So I, as for the risers that you heard here, I had to use other libraries. You know, these guys. It would have been nice if they included risers too, but hey, I'm not complaining. This sound, like these sounds here are literally one of my favorite trim. Like I, now I'm on my favorite trader samples, which I'm going to use a lot personally. So um, that's for the trader samples. And again, you also got the patches so you can you know, even trigger them by contact and stuff like that and process them with the Jaeger graphical user interface I, sh I showed you before, but I do prefer to work in audio. Now, let's move on to the percussion and the vocals. Now, let's move on to vocals. Then I'm going to talk about the percussion. Now, the vocals uh, are the compartment of this library that blew me away the most, especially because I don't have many libraries like this one, you know, um, sort of expressive solo vocals. So it was something new for me. I was like blown away by them. And I still am. Like, they sound so great. And as an example, in the demo you, we heard before, we had both solo vocals and also chords. Now, the solo vocals are all ah uh, notes, and they sound like this. And these are legatos. You have both legatos and also sustains. So with the sustains, I played some simple chords. So yeah, that's that. And you get other articulations too. Now, you get all the various legatos. So you get the as and you get the os. So if we take this and we move this to O's sound like this. And there's also mm. If you change articulation between them, so if you go from, for example, mm to O and then to A, ah, it's not gonna do the legato thing though. So yeah, if you have, if you want to trick, like change um, uh, syllable, you're gonna have to crossfade your volumes in a, such a way that it sounds as if it's playing legatos, which is something that I don't really like. But apart from that, you know, these vocals sound amazing. And that's not that's not all, by the way. There's more. You have some phrases, which are quite loud, quite loud, by the way, and they go something like this. So yeah, they can go quite loud. Um, so these are very impressive. They are also kind of loud too. I wish they were a bit more balanced in terms of volume compared to the rest of the, the, you know, the sounds here. You also have upscales, which are like this. All right, they're just scales, pretty much. And breeds. Very interesting. You can use those along with the vocals if you want to you know, breathe more life into them. Now, the thing I do like about the phrases is that they sound amazing. The thing I don't like is the fact that um, if you press one note and you release it, the phrase is still going to go. It's going it's to like, you know, play um, until it resolves. So you cannot you know, move from one phrase to another and blend ma ma many phrases together unless you open multiple patches and you do the volume crossfade again. Uh, at least that's, I, that's what I think from my experience with this. Maybe there is a way to blend phrases in 
But in my experience, you press one note and it plays whole phrase and you cannot stop it. So that's not very good. But the quality of them is so amazing. And the, the, you know, the thing about not stopping the phrase, I think they're going to fix it in the next updates anyway. So it's not a huge problem, you know, it's just a little problem that, that I found. And yeah, that's for the vocals. And they sound really, really amazing. Like when you play with this, you're going to be blown away, literally. They sound incredible. And there aren't many libraries like this one. You know, many, many libraries, vocal libraries like this one, in my experience. There are some, which I haven't tried, but, you know, we're talking about Merete Solvet here, which is like one of the most insane singers. And it's impressive that someone finally noticed her and said, hey, let's make a sample library together. That was the best thing. So that's probably my favorite part of Jaeger. Now, for the final part, the percussion. The percussion are my least favorite part of this library, but that isn't to say that they're bad. There are, they just weren't as mind-blowing as the rest for me. So it, they come in a very broad variety of percussion. They're mostly organic sort of orchestral percussion. You have Grand Casa, which sounds something like this. Really, really amazing. And these are, you know, all the articulations you get are pretty much hits and rolls, pretty much, you know, percussion. But you still get the big knob, you can still do your things. Oh my god, this sounds something like Out of Tron Legacy. Amazing. But yeah, you also have Piatti, and in here, you only have the hit. And I wish they added, uh, you know, Piatti symbol roll or something like that, because I use symbol rolls a lot in my orchestrations. And there is none in this, you know, library. So that's a bit of a bummer. Then you have the snares. Not bad. You have, uh, oh yeah, snares. That was a snare high ensemble. You also have a snare low. These rolls are amazing. You got the taiko solo, drum, and it's taiko solo low, taiko solo mid and high. This is a low one. It's a mid one. And this is the high. There's also the tam tam, which is like a gong. And in this case, you do have a roll. So I wish they did the same thing with the piatti and, or maybe some cymbals, you know. But yeah. Then you have the tom ensemble. High and low. This is the high, this is the low. Now, this percussion, I say it's, they are my least favorite because as you might know, I like the big, you know, huge percussion, like hybrid sounding, sort of like damage. Decimator drums, uh, strike force, those, those guys, you know, that sort of ignorant percussion is my, my cup of tea. These ones are, they are powerful, but they are very organic. So I wouldn't use this in every of my, every orchestration of mine. And I have some organic percussion libraries, which I kind of prefer to this one. But um, the thing I, that, you know, bring, like, takes me back a bit like that, you know, I don't really love is the, um, the velocities changes when you when you play this percussion. If you play high velocities, they are loud. If you play low velocities, they are quiet. But in between, I feel there aren't many levels of intensity. I think then there aren't many levels of intensity, and that's the same. I noticed the same thing with the short articulations on the strings and brass. So if you play on high velocities, you feel it. If you play low velocities, you feel it. But in between, when you want to play, you know, a syncopated notes at, you know, intermittent velocity levels, I cannot explain that in words, but you know what I mean. Uh, you're like, they're either going to be going to be too quiet or too loud. There are not many samples levels, like intensity levels in between. And that's a huge bummer for me because I use rhythms a lot. I like to play with, you know, velocities a lot in my percussion and in my strings and stuff. And not being able to do that is a huge bummer for me, but that's just me. That's just my personal style. I do recommend you to go on Audio Imperial's SoundCloud channel, YouTube and whatever, and check out the demos and walkthroughs they have there. 
check out what the people are saying about this library. 360 percent degrees, 60 percent. Well, how? 360 degrees. So you can get um, sort of an overview from multiple points of view. You know, because I just I'm not a god. I compose in my style, and my style is not the best style ever. It's just my style. But for my style, this thing about velocities is a bit not too good. The other thing is, you know, the loudness that is missing on some articulations and stuff like that is not too good either. So it's not as if I'm only going to use all the Imperial Jaeger. Jaeger is a great addition for quiet stuff, but for the loud things and stuff like that, I'm still going to use other libraries way more. Um, so those are the only two bad things about Jaeger, in my opinion. The thing, the fact that uh, the velocities are not super great um, in terms of dynamics, in terms of how yeah, I told you the velocity intensity levels and the fact that it's not as loud as I would have wanted it to be. But it's not a defect. It's by design. They wanted this library to be balanced. It's just that I personally don't really like things that are, you know, don't give me that immense power, like decimator drums and stuff like that. So, yeah, that, those are the only two big downsides for me about this library. And the rest is freaking awesome. The vocals are awesome. The string legatos are pretty great. The brass sounds good and stuff like that. And percussion do sound good. I'm, I'm not going to use them, but not as frequently as damage because of my style. Now, the final verdict about this library. The price, I think it's $599. And it's a very decent price for the amount of stuff you get. Now, do I feel like this is a must-buy library? That is relative to the composer, and this is true for literally every single library I will ever review on this channel. People keep on asking me, hey Alex, do I need to buy this? Do I need to buy this one? This other one? This other? The answer is always, you know it. You know if you need to buy a certain thing. I can tell you the good things about the library. I can tell you the things I liked, the things I did not like. But a tool is relative to the style of the composer. You might use this library way more than I will because your style might be more compatible with what it is. Or you might use it less because your style is less competitive than mine when it comes to Jaeger, you know? So what I recommend you to do is ask yourself, why, the, like, why, why do I want to buy this library? Maybe your reason is, all right, I'm a composer who has, doesn't have lots of libraries and this one opened me so many doors with awesome strings, brass, good percussion, awesome sound design great vocals, then yes, that's, you know, that's a sign you freaking need it because that's what you get. And it means you're, you're not going to use it a lot. Or maybe you just want some cool sound design and vocals, then you still need it. But consider that you're going to pay the full price for other things that you might not use. You do your math, you see if you can afford it and everything. But if you're a composer who feels like all his libraries are amazing and he doesn't need something more and you ask yourself, do I need this? Why do you need it? And if you cannot find the right answer to why you need it, then you don't need it, you know? Is it a great library? It is fucking amazing as a library. But do you need it? That's the thing I want to ask yourself. So the verdict is upon to you in your case. Personally for me, this was a great addition to my arsenal. I'm going to use it a lot along with Neutropolis Arc for the quiet parts. And I'm going to use the solo vocals and the sound design samples a whole lot. So in that sense, it was super worthwhile for me. So yeah. I think it's a great one, though. Like, it's really one of the best libraries I ever tried. Do you need it? That's up for you to choose. Now, that's all for this review. If you're interested in seeing more reviews or even tutorials, because I don't only do sample library reviews on this channel, but I also do orchestral music tutorials, check out the rest of this channel, subscribe if you haven't yet, and share this channel with a friend who might earn some help out of it. Also, if you want to see me making more of these videos, go to my Patreon page and consider supporting this channel, because that's what is keeping this channel running and alive. And it also gets you lots of rewards back. Now, if you want to buy this library, by the way, the link will be in the description of this video. So you can go on Audio Imperial's website and buy the thing. I also recommend you to check out the demos they have there so you get a more broad idea of what this library is. But if you were like 100% convinced by what I said here and the example I showed you, then buy it straight away because it's awesome. If you're still doubt, you still have doubts, check out the other reviews and make up your mind. So yeah, that's it for this review. Good job, Audio Imperia, for creating this beast. And as for you guys, I'll see you in the next videos.